it's Crazy Fan Girl Shine. We hope you guys are having an amazing day. Um, we are here with the final episode of Season 3, Episode 12, Souls in Darkness. <laughs> so I'm guessing the beginning of the episode starts off with good old getting rid of Raishan, a uh, big battle against her. Then, I mean, this is where it gets iffy. Is it going to be Percy's resurrection first? Or is it going to be Scanlan leaving? Because I understand that I think I'm getting the feeling, like I said in previous episodes, that Scanlan is going to leave, probably after this fight. And I'm very nervous. So I would love either if Scanlan leaves first, but then I can't remember, does he make an offering in Percy's resurrection? I cannot remember for the life of me. But um, even if he doesn't, it would be cool to have him there to bring him back because obviously the emotional reaction he had to him dying um, and then leaving, but I'm not sure because like, um, it would be cool if Scanlan left and they were like, okay, let's try this thing with the gun, like especially with Vax. He's like, okay, let's have a look and see what happened with Percy's soul. Um, and then we maybe end the season with Percy waking up or something like that. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Your girl's nervous now. Oh, God. She's very, 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 very scared. Let us start this and let's go because I'm nervous. Oh. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. All that good jazz. But let's jump into it. No help. You're all alone, kids. But you are lucky. Yeah, what happened to the group? You become death, child. <laughs> I love that. I've become death. Ooh. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh! Oh, thank god. Something to kill it. <laughs> go, Grog! Oh no. Oh, oh come on, Kiki. Oh! God, thank God. Oh what my God, the heart attack! Oh my God! Fire. Yes, Pikey Poo. These flames burn different. What do you mean? <gasps> Your puppets. I pulled your strings and you danced. <laughs> Hello? Oh my God! Go oh, back. What the hell? Keely! I've got a plan. Don't do this to me, Kiki. Fax. Oh! Trust me. Believe in her! Oh! She's got this. She can do it. Until they betrayed us, claiming nature for themselves, you would do the same. That's a lie! Play naive. <laughs> Yes, but they attack first! Mm. Come on. Mm -mm. Go, go, go. I don't know what you're doing, but... Oh, Keyleth! Oh! Let's go! Oh, let's go, Kiki! Oh, Jesus! Oh, my God! Come on, Kiki! Oh my god! What are you trying to do? Oh! No! No! Oh my god! Kiki! Is she gonna turn to her El Earth? Philip? shame. Thought I could raise to her mother. It's only fitting he ends you as well. Vax! No, you don't, bitch! What? Let's go! <gasps> oh, she's bringing... Let's go! She's festering her again! Let's go, Keyleth! No! You can't! Not again! Oh, smart cookie, Keyleth, smart cookie! Uh, you cannot harm this body! Looks 
like she just did. <laughs> My god, shooting him with the gun. Let's go. Get wrecked, Raishan! Oh my god! Oh. I don't know how you did that. But you are legendary. Oh. Are you gonna kiss me or what? <laughs> yes! Oh, wait, one sec. Oh, the purple thing. <laughs> so chunky. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> oh, taking care of her. Oh, oh hello. For His soul is already violated. Temper with death, and you will know sorrow far worse. Even if you retrieve him, there will be a cost. Show me. God, oh, this raven bitch. <laughs> I've sensed that his soul is being held prisoner within Orthax. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> Ugh, I need a drink. <laughs> Bye. If you, Vax, if you don't return, if I lose Percy and you, I would gladly give my soul for one day of your happiness. <laughs> Stop it! Oh my no God! Can undo the past. Well, one can certainly try. Oh, how dare you? How? How dare you? Oh. His body is as good as I can get it. Oh, Percy. Oh. This is cooler than just a plain old resurrection. Oh. Vortex, I seek vengeance. Against whom? Against you. Oh. Why have you come, Raven Champion? <laughs> there is nothing for you here. They all do. Oh, uh. This revival's gonna be way tougher without cash. I'll help you. You belong here too, a scared little boy. No, Vax. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, is he forced to like work on his revenge? Percy! Who are you? <laughs> to be done. Is that the price? I he doesn't have any memories left? Mind, his shame fuels my forge. The roar of its fire cannot drown out his guilt. No! Percival deserves this. No! Fuck he does. Come on, Vax, come on! Can't maintain it! Vex, talk to Percy! Do this, but your friends need you. Damn it, I need you! Percy. This isn't how I wanted to do this. Day with you in Singorn. When you stood next to me and you allowed me to be part of something that you hoped dearest. You stood up for me and I. Oh, what I an image! You. you have to find your way back to us, Percy. I love you, darling. My heart. It's yours. <gasps> oh! Exalia. Oh! He loves you, and so do I, brother. Oh! Oh! Yes, go, Percy. This is my advertisement so I can talk oh my god I would like everybody who ever complained in the past week who said critical role don't know what they're doing don't know what their characters are like anymore to freaking apologize because this proves otherwise and look I loved the stream but this is even cooler this I loved it <laughs> better oh. darling 
You made it to the gate twice today. At this rate, I'll be jogging by my 60th birthday. <laughs> as long as the other bits work, I don't mind. <laughs> I owe you my life, brother. I won't forget it. Oh. What's going to happen to Vax, though? Oh. <gasps> she won't forget her. Um, buddies? Yes, knife. I will do your bidding. <laughs> 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 you <stupid laughs> you do. <laughs> Gilmore! <laughs> <laughs> Thought I smelled chicken. But with all the treasure we found and the adventure we had, I've been looking for something else. I tried all the wrong ways to find it, but the right one found me. As corny as it sounds, I like myself better when I'm with Kaylee. But you matter to us too, Scanlan. You guys are like family to me. But now I have a real family. And she's the best. Uh, I, I don't want to bring down the room. I, I just wanted to say that after dinner, we're heading out. Where will you go? Where tour sounds nice. I've been putting off my Aramente, but... It's time to become who I was meant to be. So, turns out we'll be leaving as well. The voice of the Tempest may need a squire. Well, I couldn't be happier for you. Just don't run off and get married or anything. And fret not, Gilmore. <coughs> Percy and I will join you in Whitestone. Your pops up again. Who do you think they're gonna call? Um, the Slayer's Tate. <laughs> uh, the protectors of the realm, you doofus? Yeah! <laughs> I'll drink to that! That's a smart big man! Well, Dad, shall we? Hold on! I know already there's gonna be a lot of people being like, Why wasn't it exactly like the stream? Again, they had to accommodate the show. And I honestly like this because it fits it perfectly. Everybody going off at the same time, yes. And I think it still gives us a surprise as to how another character is going to be introduced. Because Scanlan might be take longer than the others. Anyway. Oh, kitties. Oh, Vex. <laughs> oh, Pike and Grog. <sighs> uh oh. His sight. We are his voice. We are his touch. We are his blood. <gasps> Lovely. Oh, my God. Damn, and that's the end of season three, my people. My goodness. Gracious me. My god. Whew. What a great three episodes. Um, I think I'm going to do... Mm, I'm trying to think if I have time to do an extra video today because it does take a while to edit. Because um, I was going to do like a full season review. But I think I just might do it in this video. Do the episodes and then season overall review. Um, okay. Let's start with episode 10. Now, obviously, this was the setup episode. We got to see, obviously, the group sort of split momentarily. Obviously, there was a lot going on. Scanlan was unconscious. Pike and Grog were trying to find a way to bring back Scanlan. Then Vex and Vex Vax went off to kill Ripley. Um, and they obviously, again, this was the build up episode. But I love that we got these moments with the characters, like showing, showing their vulnerability, showing their strength, Keyleth, and then vulnerability with Vex. Um, and then with Pike, like br getting the courage to go out, seek Kaylee, and tell her about Scanlan and how he wants to be a better father and how he wants to be better for her. And I think that's such a beautiful notion as well. And then I love the moment when Kaylee's like sipping the ale and Ke Pike's like, oh, eh, like just panicking. I loved it. Just, oh, that's, I, I want someone to make that like the new meme format because that was great. And then obviously we got to episode 11. So episode 11, again, it was like that rising tension that to hit like the climax of that episode. And we got the death of Ripley. Now, of course, 
This is very different from the campaign. And l I've said this every time. We have the campaign and we have the animated show. And if you guys saw my post a couple of days about Travis Willingham's fireside chat on Beacon, for people who don't know, Travis Willingham is the voice of Grog Strongjaw and is the CEO of Critical Role. Um, and he had like a QA and a chat going on on Critical Role and he was talking about the show. Um, and uh, I found it very insightful. And he was talking about the fact that, you know, they didn't want to be predictable because they knew that people would go, oh, there's a resurrection immediately after Percy's death. Same with Scanlan, because Scanlan, if people don't know, was supposed to die, actually. And he was resurrected. Um, and then the whole him going off with Kaylee was supposed to happen. Um, and then he said, look, we didn't want to be predictable. We didn't want it to be exactly the same as it was in the campaign live stream shows because otherwise it just it's like even for me if it's the same thing over and over again the exact copy i'm gonna get tired of it like i'm not gonna be a huge fan of it i said this one for example this is a movie but lion king word for word every single thing songs are all the same um and it's just boring the live action one i'm saying which i don't like at all <laughs> like for many reasons but um like with that it's word for word the exact same thing shot to shot the same exact thing and it's boring it's like okay there's nothing new in this already cool i came and wasted my money here with this it's i love it because it kept me anxious this whole week i was speaking to friends about it we all like had anxiety attacks about it and we're like panicking about it what's gonna happen um and yet they pulled it off so beautifully and so many things happened and tied it off really beautifully. Again, going back to what I was talking about, the whole Ripley death, loved it so much. Um, again, it's very different from the campaign, but I really like how they did it because it was two siblings, especially Vex, going after the one that murdered the, the love of her life um, and got the revenge that she wanted. And I loved the fight. I love how you see Ripley just obviously so connected to Orthax, immediately bringing out the second arm and like, oh, and then her like ruthlessness as well. Um, I was talking about it. I love her in the show. I love her in the campaign, but she's so much more fleshed out in this. Again, you sympathize with her and then you're like, sort of like smacked in the face with the fact that no, she is not like Percy. She is the evil side of him, basically the evil version of him and will not come to the good side. She is just pure evil. Um, and it's just so, ugh, I love it. It's so good, but so, ugh, so, ugh. love her so much. And love oh, the way Vex killed her. Yes. Oh, it was so good. And I love the whole pirate fight. Um, sorry. So coming back to how Vex killed her again, very, it, it very much mirrors what happened in the campaign, which I love because it was straight through the chest, straight through the throat. And I was like, yes, that was like the one thing I wanted. I was like, please, if it's one thing I want is for Vex to get that final blow. And I'm so glad that she did. Um, and that was so beautifully done. I loved how they did that. And again, pirate fight. So good, and again, gets me vibed for Mighty Nine. I absolutely loved as well, Keyleth. I love that we got, finally, we had some time with her because yes, we had her time, sort of like these moments of her like doubting herself, the whole thing with Raishan and the whole, Vax and her. I love that, don't get me wrong, but I love that we actually got to see her grow on her own. Like she left knowing that she needed to do some soul searching on her own. She needed to just be alone for a while, do her thing, isolate herself and do her thing. And I love how she stood up to the council. And then that one, I didn't catch her name. The one council lady who actually stood up and was like, no, I see potential in you. Let's give this a go. There's a massive risk, but let's give, it, give this a go. Um, and I love that. Like, I love that in stories when, you know, I know it's a cliche, but I love it when someone like stands from the masses and is like, no, actually, let's give this person a go. If they're willing, if they're that passionate about it, give them a go. Like, yes, they might fail in this case. She could have died. But I love that. I love that sort of trope in stories, like giving a person a chance, um, whether it's a second chance or even just a chance at something who has so much potential. It's just, yes, love it. And yeah, then seeing her go through that. And uh, I I love that it wasn't just like an easy process. It wasn't like, because I think with those sort of rituals, we see like 
almost being like gentle like almost being like held either by the deity or like by your power being able to see through all these like versions of time or whatever whenever you're doing those sort of rituals in D&D but seeing how dangerous it was like her panicking the instability of like the versions of her like wavering oh I loved that imagery so so much I love fantasy magic and seeing how like there's that danger to it it's so good um and then again her sort of falling into herself and trying to like obviously find the person that believes in her and then she realizes it is Vax all this time <laughs> um and just like her accepting it and being like yes I need to cling to that love same with him like both of them need to be like intertwined in this romance and like oh it's so good and like not even just for romance or for something sexual it's more just like you are meant to be together you work well together you disagree but that's the beauty of love and like yeah oh, it's so good and then yeah just that moment of them coming together facing Raishon in the ziggurat again that's why I was like mm, does this have something with the whispered one but obviously it didn't it was just her performing a ritual um and then yeah I love the shot when you're like she's dead and it's like okay she died and then the head just goes actually and it's just like oh god the animation in the show is amazing it's so good and then obviously we got the really sweet scene as well I forgot to mention this with Kaylee speaking to um Scanlan I was about to say Sam lol I'm <laughs> merging all the, the names together but her talking to him and being so vulnerable and telling her about her insecurities of being his daughter and afraid of disappointing him especially because he left she's afraid of him leaving again oh girl I, she that girl has my heart she is so precious she's got a fire in her but oh She's so, so precious. I love Kaylee so much. Now, the final episode. Like, oh, I was, again, I was stressing for these episodes because I was like, how are they going to finish this and get it all done and make it work, like, really well? And I think this is one of the best finales ever done, I think, because finales always struggle to land on the beat, to land it really well. And they did, I think, in every way. Obviously, we got that magnificent fight between Raishan, Keyleth and of course Vox Machina but th the fight between Keyleth and Raishan was very personal and it's, it is I'm pretty sure it's very different from the original um, because I think in the original she casts Feeble Mind on her which is insane it's so cool but I think in this version it's so much more sinister like how Raishan went through all that trouble to get the body to go to the ziggurat to try and get her body into Thordak and in the end she's like Keyleth's like nah bitch and she just puts the poison back into her body oh so good and can I say the shots of Vax like in absolute terror screaming for Keyleth when he thought she died I was like oh my god like how can you do this to me like oh it was just so painful oh god and it was so so good then her like rising out of the ground obviously like the beginning of her like earth like part of her powers and her coming out of the ground and like pushing him away pushing her away from vax and just, oh it was so good and then putting the poison back oh that was just so so good and the body just deteriorating because of that poison and disease oh it was so so good just beautiful and then him holding her in her arms and then just yeah it was so so good ha <laughs> ha it was so nice now obviously the big question we were all wondering was is Percy going to be revived in this season and uh, I think this was so much better than a normal resurrection um I really love how like it was it, it, it's a cost there's a cost to doing it because obviously like with D and d they were like oh there's a cost like obviously there's a, a a draining cost which in the campaign it took a long time for percy to get not long but it took a while for percy to come back and like be fully like back to normal um same with vex when she died and other characters who died previously but then yeah just actually like having those like rings of like resurrection circles vax going through like basically like the mind palace and going to fight orthak not fight but like face off orthax oh and the images of the orthax was just so so cool um he's such a cool design like the way that they animated him was so so cool um and then him running through the corridors of these prisons like where orthax had these souls and then at the end is just percy like almost like an empty shell 
a slave to Orthax continuously just hammering at the gun. Oh my god. A slave basically to his guilt, which is something that he's been fighting this whole season. Oh, <laughs> it was so good. And then obviously we got the beautiful speech from Vex, which is, I think, very much summarized, but it's what she said in the campaign when they resurrected him, like the offering she made. And she got a natural 20 when she did it. So beautiful. Um, and so just uh, having that moment and seeing the resurrection and him fall into her arms and then him slowly wake up and just, oh, it was so nice. Oh, it was so, so, so nice. So nice, so nice, so, so good. Yeah, and it just lifted so much anxiety off my chest. But then obviously the price, unfortunately, is the fucking Raven Queen coming to ruin Vax and just... I hate it! Like, that corrosion on his arm is very much reminding me of what happened with da Dalen's closet, I think that's what it's called, and he was describing a certain thing that happened. I'm trying to not spoil it, but, like, Critical Role fans will know what I'm talking about, but he was talking about certain features that changed Vax, and I was like, please, no, I'm not ready for that, <laughs> even though, like, I know the show is probably going to finish in, like, the next two seasons, I'm not ready at all, but yeah, I, again, like I said before during the reaction, I love the way that they concluded it, I know that obviously people probably wanted a really angsty ending, I thought it was going to be angsty, I will admit, I thought it was, but I'm not disappointed though with the way that they did it, I like that everybody went their separate way, because it's almost like, if they did stay together, what's the point though? Because they basically did do what they were supposed to do, which was to get rid of the Chroma Conclave. So they did. Um, and their battle is done. Uh, so I do like the way they did it. Like, again, we have the stream and we have the campaign. That will always be there for us. I love that Scanlan said it, he announced it, but then slowly Keyleth and Vax were like, oh, actually, she wants to finish her Aramente. Percy and Vex, they want to go to Whitestone, recover for him, but also recovery for Whitestone. And then Pike and Grog, I'm guessing, are probably going to work on stuff with, like, themselves together as t the two cuties that they are. And I think during the campaign, that's when Keyleth starts, like, making temples for the Everlight and stuff. I think I might be wrong, someone correct me on that. But, um... I don't know, I think this is the perfect way to conclude the season. It's not a finale finale, but it's like, oh, we'll be back. Like, the world will need us again. Very much like an Avengers moment where everybody separates, but if the world needs us, we'll be back together. Um, and then obviously, we got a shot of the Whispered One. So I am very, very excited for that. Next season is going to be insane. It's going to be on a different level. It's going to be 10 times more emotional, which I'm not looking forward to, but it'll be good. And again, this whole season was another level. So let's go, let's talk about the season overall. I will say it was one of the best seasons that we've got of animation in terms of like Vox Machina and even just animation in a long time. I think this show really pushed the boundaries of animation. Um, the story was really good. Obviously, I said, like, in a few episodes, there were, like, there were slow introductions into the episodes, but that does happen, especially with animation, or even, like, when you're doing these three-episode things, you got to do, like, a slow beginning, like, get everything in prepare preparation, really, and then push the episode forward with the next episode, or even the ending of the first episode of the three-episode, like, thing set up. <laughs> and uh, either, even though that was like that... I know that it'll build after that. So, like, I love that we did get that. Like, always. Like, it was a slow start, but boom. Then we're off We're off to the races, really, once it starts. So, I really enjoyed all the episodes. There's n I don't think anything really stood out as a massive flaw. Obviously, we had massive changes, but I've said this previously. I love the changes, honestly. I, again, hate predictability if it's something being adapted. So I love that they made their changes. I love the way it was. Um, and again, we the thing is, this is the beauty of it. We have the campaign still at our disposal. We're very lucky. So I'm so happy that they did go with the different changes and they made it, I don't know, like you have to fight for it more in a way. And I love that so, so much. And um, I know a lot of people I think was worried about like the the evolution of people's story arcs, but I think they did it really well. They did it for Vex and Vax really well. Like, I've spoken about this. They spoke a lot about their trauma 
in their episodes, especially about love, you know, like with Vex and Percy, like her wanting to just to be like a sort of like, um, not a romantic relationship, but a benefits relationship, basically. Vax didn't want a relationship because obviously he's also scared of falling in love and even like causing any trauma to Keyleth, which unfortunately the Raven Queen kept being a third wheel and trying to plague him, <laughs> which is so annoying. And I loved that there was that, like, with Keyleth and Percy having had their character arcs, not mostly, but like they were recovering with their like their arcs and they were the confident people like it's which is a difference from the campaign um because i think with keyleth and vax both of them had doubts but more vax than keyleth i might be wrong um and then with percy it was just stubbornness <laughs> um but then i i love that that we had that struggle for both the couples both of them like sort of putting their insecurities aside and i said this in a comment as well like with love pain is inconsequential because if you love something so much, of course something's gonna hurt it eventually, like sadly, which is life. But um, I don't know, like I, lo I love that we had that, like bo both couples coming to the realization. Unfortunately, Vex going through a lot of trauma and then realizing that she loved Percy. But then obviously at the end, they got together, which is really nice. And then obviously with Vax, he knows his time is limited with the beautiful Keyleth, but he's going to save her every moment with her. <laughs> so yeah. I loved that, and I love that we got the story with Pike as well. I feel like that's going to be more explored next season. So I'm glad they didn't do too much in this, like, final arc for her, because, like, I would really like for that to be explored as well next season. Because um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, like, not sure about her story arc, but I really like that it's not f pure belief in the Everlight. It's more like, yes, I believe in the Everlight, but... I also need to believe in the power that I have myself, which is beautiful. Um, and that I'm a big fan of that sort of story. Like instead of all the power being like, hey goddess, can you help me? More like I have power, I I need to harness it and I need to use it. So that's why I love it. I, and I think with Grog, Grog is all over the place. So <laughs> it's okay with him. It's like, okay, like you're just a chaotic character. So I'm okay with that. But then with Scanlan, his arc, I really, really loved as well. Even though we didn't get the heart wrenching Bard's lament that we obviously have in the campaign. I love that he came to the realization that he was struggling to find himself through this whole season and felt, oh, okay, actually, I need to step away because I feel like I could be, uh, like I could find my true self with my daughter. I need to take the time to do that. And I love that. And I, I love that we got that in the ending and again not heart wrenching but it's beautiful like him walking away saying goodbye to uh pike and grog and then walking away and going with kaylee so i think that was really really beautiful and i loved that that um that story for him because obviously we saw him struggling with that and yes he has these beautiful like magic purposes he has the chateau he like you know he's he's an incredible bard um but he was very much lost in himself especially like we saw it like with him trying to address Kaylee and their relationship at the beginning of the season then his relationship with Pike and how he didn't understand that oh we need to build this relationship instead of pushing towards kissing or an intimate relationship which is something I love um and again I love the different couples that we have in the show it's such a variety and just so so well written, so good, and again, campaign one is a testament to how amazing that campaign was. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this season was magnificent. I think it was really, really good, and just very well done, and just, yeah, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Well, of course, we have the Whispered One. He is coming! Um, and I love that they haven't shown another design for him i love that we have to wait another season um and that mm -hmm, we're gonna see that like later whenever that comes out um i'm super excited for that i am so stoked Whew. i yeah i absolutely love this show i love these characters i love critical role um and yeah i just think they did a wonderful wonderful job and they should be so proud i doubt they'll watch this but critical role 
Fantastic job. Well done. Also, speaking of that, Australian fans, uh, Critical Role's coming to Melbourne next year. I'm so excited for that. Um, you can bet your asses that I am going to try and go because I really, 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 really want to, like, just look at them in person. <laughs> Please like, subscribe, and comment um, if you enjoyed the season or like what your thoughts are. Even if you didn't like it, please comment. Would love to just discuss. Um, I again, I absolutely love this season. Um, and of course, if you're a fan of Critical Role and are excited for Mighty Nine, whenever that comes out, I will be reacting to that show. You can bet your asses on that because I again. Yes, Vox Machina. I was connected to it a lot, but Mighty Nine. I literally was there from day one, like a lot more, like intensely because it was. Uh, no. It was just before COVID started. They they started it. I can't remember. Was it 2017? No. 2018? I can't remember. Whenever it was. Um, and I was going through uni. I would listen to the episodes and watch them. And yeah. So I don't know when Mighty Nine will come out. But whenever it comes out, I'll be watching it. And same with Vox Machina Season 4. Oh my god. This is going to be so good. But anyway. I'm going to leave this here. Um, the next show that we will be reacting to. It has been confirmed now. I'm planning it with my friend, Tommy. We are going to be watching Arcane. So there's going to be a schedule for that though because my friend has is working so we need to go by like what he's doing. Um, it'll probably be like every single, not every single day, but day episodes. Like not all at once like I did with Vox because obviously he works and I'm unemployed so it's easy for me to do this. So yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for this. I absolutely love doing these Vox Machina rea reactions. Um... And your support would be much appreciated just so I could continue doing this. And I would really, really appreciate it. But anyway, thank you guys so much. I love you guys so much. Uh, take care of yourselves. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace, Pango out.